Hey, what are you doing? Oh, just just eating my ice cream. Right out of the carton like that? You're not going to grab a bowl? Oh, well, I figured, you know, it's mine, so no one else is really eating it. I don't want to dirty any more dishes than is necessary, you know? No, no, it's fine. We have a scooper. We have bowls. We have mugs. No, like, no, really, really. I'm totally comfortable. This, Yep, it, everything's fine. I don't understand why you're being so difficult right now. I literally told you we have a scoop, okay. we have bowls, we have mugs. You're not going to okay. eat your ice cream with a spoon like okay. that. You're going to yeah. bend my spoon back. Okay. You're going to break my silverware. I don't okay. understand why it's so hard to have a fucking conversation with you. My pronouns are bald eagle. When we were growing up in the 80s, we didn't have rainbows. We didn't have pronouns. We didn't have safe spaces. You know, I live next to a family of liberals. And they have a little girl. Oh, or should I say, a she, her. My pronouns are Donald Trump. Ooh. Kids these days just don't know what it was like growing up in the 80s. Ooh. Our parents had no idea where we were. Yep. Woo. I did cocaine. Now they're saying we can't do gender reveals. We have to have person reveals. And I am a registered Republican. Are you S A? A lot of these anti trans bills for kids, intersex kids are specifically carved out. So in these bills, it says you can't commit no genital mutilation, no hormones. Your kid must be the, the biological sex that they were born unless they are intersex. And then we must do genital surgery. We must prescribe hormones. We must enforce the binary. Mm. So that's, and I'm, and you can, if you think I'm being hyperbolic right now, not you or just anyone watching, mm. like do this research, look up what intersex is. Trying the first WeWork restaurant in Ireland, aka Chinese guy rates Chinese restaurants in Ireland, Dublin Part 14. Lads, I'm at AFNT, the first restaurant in Ireland that offers authentic cuisines from Xinjiang, a place known for its amazing food and gorgeous scenery. And the restaurant is run by a WeWork family, so you know you're getting the real taste of Xinjiang. The WeWorks are recognized as native to the Xinjiang WeWork Autonomous Region in Northwest China and are one of China's 55 ethnic minorities. And yes, it's pronounced WeWork according According to the owner, Uyghur. although I know I'm completely butchering it, and the WeWork family did not come to Ireland to play. Check out the first dish I got. I can't even move it with my arms. It's called Da Panji, big plate chicken or hot chicken stew on their menu. Since not many non-Chinese speakers will know what big plate chicken is, it's one of the most popular and quintessential dishes from Xinjiang. The main ingredients are marinated chicken, mixed peppers, potatoes, onions, garlic, etc., and it's served with these hand pulled noodles called Ku Dai Mian, which directly translates to belt noodles. The chicken is so tender and the noodles just soaked all the sauce from the stew and have a very nice chewy texture. The whole dish is so rich, spicy, and hearty and it's definitely meant to be shared among at least three to four people. There's a reason why it's called big plate chicken and I would even call it big basin chicken. Also, all their noodles are hand pulled and I got the chance to see how they make the noodles in the kitchen. You see, they have these thinner hand pulled noodles called lachman and these belt noodles I just had in the big plate chicken. I also got their zizhi suan nai, original yogurt. You can tell it's made of fresh milk and it's served cold in this cute metal cup. It's so refreshing for the hot summer. Yang rou chuan, lamb skewers, they come in a big size too. I can literally use them as a weapon, but apparently it's just the standard size in Xinjiang. Lamb skewers are the most famous specialty from Xinjiang. You can also see many restaurants selling lamb skewers in any other Chinese city. It's spicy and cuminy, and there's a nice smoky flavor that lingers in your mouth. It's so Xinjiang, I feel like I'm in Xinjiang right now. Samsa, Kao Bao's baked buns. If you're a fan of any bao buns, you cannot miss this savory Xinjiang pastry. The skin is so thin and baked to a lovely flaky and crispy texture, and it's filled with beef and onion. It's so juicy and tasty. I also got Xinjiang milk tea. I've never had it before. It's so interesting because it's salty. Not my favorite, but that's what everybody drinks in Xinjiang. Then I got this nang, which is a type of bread and a staple in Xinjiang, and you can dip the nang in the milk tea or the sauce from the big plate chicken. 
and another refreshing salad for the summer called Ban San Si, which is made of carrots and vermicelli. I finished with this Mei Gui Cha fresh rose tea. It's so pretty and smells like perfume, and it tastes very fresh and floral. And this dessert pastry called baklava. It's flaky on the outside and filled with mixed nuts and syrup on the inside. Very delicious with the rose tea. Overall, I give Afan Tea a 9.5 out of 10. They have amazing food and service, and it's beautiful to see an ethnic family from China sharing their culture. Culture in Ireland. Like and follow for more. The, the first, first day I realized I was black. It was 2000. We had just learned about blacks for the first time in second grade at recess. All the white kids chased me into the wood chanting slave. My mother said I refused to come out for three hours. Said she thinks I was lost in the trees, but I just needed to be closer to my roots. As, As a, a woman, woman, having a boyfriend is a battle. If 70% of us are abused in a lifetime, what is the number of men doing it? The answer is not one man running faster than light to complete a mission, and that is what leaves me sick. The second day I realized I was black was in a gas station. I only had 25 cents, so I searched what to spend it on. The cashier floated from aisle to aisle, eyes fixed on my hands. That, that was, was the, the first, first time, time I realized, realized skin, skin color was, was a crime. crime. My body has become calls to write legislation, calls for ass snacks in the back of a class. My body has demanded everything except respect. I've been asked, what makes you feel unsafe? And I struggle not to yell everything. everything. The third day I realized I was black was in an all-white cafeteria. I gathered my legs under me, made rockets on my feet, and approached a girl. She told me she was not into my type of guy. I felt the words shoot daggers into my melanin. I have never wanted to disappear so bad. As a woman, I've learned to answer to everything except my name. Little lady is not said to mean equal, but to make sure I remember my place, I battle between wanting to own my body and accepting there is a one in four chance a man will lay claim to my skin, a plot of land for the taking. The last day I realized I was black was in an elevator in California. To the white woman that told me she knows what it feels like to be black because she grew up poor, I, I would, would tell, tell you to think, think before, before you speak, but your mind has got to be bacteria infected and any filter through that labyrinth of nothingness might be worse than no thought at all. There's a group of women going around the room sharing their personal definition of feminism. He is the only man in the room and all of a sudden the tone switches to destroying the patriarchy by annihilating all men. Do you know what it feels like to be black? To pop lock your way in and out of hugs, it is not a problem you want to sympathize. But, but to, to tell, tell me you know, know my pain, pain is to stab yourself in the leg because you saw me get shot. We have two different wounds, and looking at yours does nothing to heal mine. Never will I turn away an ally. But when a man speaks on my behalf, that only proves my point. Movements are driven by passion, not by asserting yourself dominant by a world that already puts you there. You, you speak, speak to no pain, you only fathom because, because we told you it was there. there. You, you know, know nothing of silence until, until someone, someone who cannot know your pain tells, tells you how to fix it. it. Every, Every day is a crucifixion when there is no regards for lines. Cross. I fight so my voice can be heard. I fight for the voices you silence all in the name of what is right. The, the problem, problem is, is you assume this struggle is attached to a social class. I am black and bold and beautiful by nature. Ain't no income that can change that. The problem with speaking up for each other is that everyone is left without, without a, a voice. voice. Hey mama, you remember that time you and daddy tied me to a chair and hit me in the shin with a fucking broom handle until I obeyed? Nah, I don't remember that. You making that up. Nah, you just trying to find an excuse for why you was a badass, hardhead little motherfucker. Nah, nah, I don't remember that. That didn't happen. It couldn't happen because I don't remember it. So your mind worked real fucking good when you bringing up shit that I did years before this. But your mind don't never work worth a fuck when I bring up some shit you did that wasn't even that long ago. Mm hmm Yeah, you're just making up stuff. My mind works fine. You're the kid. I'm the parent! Soft. That's what you kids are these days. You're soft. You're always whining, always complaining about something. This water's lukewarm. They can't even afford to put ice cubes in the water and you're gonna charge me $18 for a damn hamburger? You just act like the world should just bend over backwards for you. You're so entitled, like you're just owed everything. Cheryl! Cheryl! Coles didn't have my shirts, Cheryl. They didn't have them in stock. No, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just am, I'm, I'm so pissed off. My generation, we've always figured stuff out for ourselves, okay? We've never needed anybody else's help, and we've always just figured it out on our own, pulled ourselves up. I don't know how this works. I don't know how this works. I, no, I don't want you to show me 
Just do it for me. I, you, you figure it out. You kids these days are just lazy. You just don't know the meaning of hard work. You've never had to work a hard day in your life. consequences do my kids have when they're not behaving? I, gentle, conscious, respectful parent, whatever you want to call it, I have a four and a two-year-old and I've been doing this for four years. I should just preface this with, I think my definition of misbehavior is probably different than yours. Yesterday I was at the park with my daughters and my daughter saw the park. She was so excited. She ripped off her coat and she threw it at me. An old lady walking by was in disbelief. She was like, I stayed super unbothered. I let her coat hit me and fall on the floor. And I said, uh, uh, your coat is on the floor now. Someone's gonna run it over. My daughter goes, oh no, runs over, grabs the coat, says, mom, can you please hold this for me while I play? I said, sure, I grabbed it and she ran off. This old lady went like this. <sighs> Some people see some of these things that my kids do as disrespectful, inappropriate, but I see them as completely developmentally appropriate. She's only been on this earth for four years and she's trying to figure out how she relates to other people, her jacket, playgrounds, what social norms are. It's a lot to take in. So I'll just start with that. But moving on, I also look at misbehavior as unmet needs or communication. If my kid is misbehaving, the first thing I look at is unmet needs. Have they slept enough? Have they eaten enough? Are they overstimulated? Are they watching too much screen time? Maybe they need more connection. This is always where I start and usually it solves the issue, but if it doesn't, that's where I go into consequences. Starting with natural consequences, I just let them figure things out on their own. I told this story before, but it's a great example. A couple months back, my daughter got out of preschool and she ran for muddy puddles and it was cold, it was wet, it was rainy. And I immediately was like, no, don't jump in the muddy puddles. She continued running for the muddy puddle and I was like, you know what? She's gonna learn. She jumped in the muddy puddle. She was all wet, she was muddy, she was gross. And on the drive home, she said, mommy, my feet hurt. And I go, why do you think your feet hurt? She goes, I need rain boots when I jump in puddles and she hasn't jumped in a puddle since. By me taking this hands-off approach, it taught her what she needed to learn. Obviously, I don't let things like this happen with safety, but let's get into logical consequences. The difference between natural and logical consequences is natural consequences just kind of happen on their own. You kind of just narrate or sportscast what's going on and they kind of draw the conclusion themselves. Logical consequences are enforced by you, but obviously not in a like crazy reactive way. You're still gentle, you're still unbothered. Just did it with my daughter this morning. She was using her toy broom to hit the wall. I set a boundary, hey, please don't use the toy broom to hit the wall. It's for playing, you're gonna damage the wall. Either stop or I'm gonna take it away from you. She didn't stop, so I took the broom away from her. She cried a little bit, but that's okay, that's expected. I let her know, like, hey, I know that's frustrating. You can go hit a pillow, but you can't damage the walls. By enforcing these logical consequences or just like sticking and holding to these boundaries, my daughter knows that 10 out of 10 times that she hits the wall, I'm gonna take whatever she's hitting it away. It's probably not gonna take me 10 whole times. Like she's gonna learn really quickly that she just can't damage walls. That's how she relates to the wall. And there you have it. Although it's really hard and you have to get really creative, like, Kids don't need punishments, timeouts, threats, bribes to gain cooperation. They are also human and a lot smarter than you think. I don't Okay. You don't like that anymore? No. That's okay. Do you want me to put you back down? Yeah. Thank you for telling me and using your voice. Thank you. My voice matters. Yes, it does. Your voice matters. 